Hey everyone, and welcome. Today we're diving into leak code problem 3202, find the maximum length of valid subsequence 2. The name sounds a little intimidating, but I promise, once we unpack the core idea, it becomes much clearer. We're going to break it down step by step. Let's get started. All right, let's look at the problem statement. We're given a list of numbers, called nums, and a positive integer, kafir key. Our task is to find a subsequence, which just means we pick some numbers from the original list while keeping them in order. Now a subsequence is called valid if it meets a specific condition. The sum of any two adjacent numbers in our subsequence must have the same remainder when divided by Kaya friends. Our goal is to find the longest one we can make. Let's take this first example. Our list is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and k is 2. The condition is that the sum of adjacent elements, modulo 2, must be constant. Modulo 2 just means checking if the sum is even or odd. Let's test the entire list. 1 plus 2 is 3, which is odd. 2 plus 3 is 5, also odd. 3 plus 4 is 7, odd. And 4 plus 5 is 9, also odd. The remainder is always 1. So the entire list is a valid subsequence. Its length is 5, and that's our answer. Okay, before we jump into code, let's really think about this condition. It says the sum of the first and second elements, modulo k -ford, has to equal the sum of the second and third, modulo k -ford, and so on. If we look at any three consecutive elements in our subsequence, let's call them a, b, and c, the rule says that the sum of a and b, modulo k -ford, must be the same as the sum of b and c, modulo k -ford. This little equation is the key to the whole problem. So, if the sum a plus b, and the sum b plus c have the same remainder when divided by k prends, we can actually remove the b from the equation. This simplifies everything down to a powerful insight. A modulo k must equal c modulo k prends. This means that any two elements separated by one position, so the first and third, the second and fourth, the third and fifth, they must all have the same remainder when divided by k. This discovery tells us there are only two possible patterns for a valid subsequence. The first is simple. All the numbers in the subsequence have the exact same remainder. The second more general pattern is that there are two remainders that just alternate back and forth. For example, a number with remainder R1 is followed by a number with remainder R2, which is followed by a number with remainder R1, and so on. This repeating predictable structure is a big hint that dynamic programming could be a great way to solve this. So let's set up our dynamic programming solution. We can use a two-dimensional array, or table, which we'll call dp. Let's define dp of i and j to be the length of the longest valid subsequence we've found so far that ends with two numbers whose remainders are i and j in that order. As we process each number from our input list, we'll use it to potentially extend our existing subsequences and update this table. All right, here's the Python code for the dynamic programming approach. It's surprisingly short and elegant. We initialize a k-by-k -K table called dp with all zeros, and a result variable, res, to keep track of the best length we've seen. Then, we loop through each number in the input list. Don't worry, we'll break down that tricky looking inner loop next. Let's focus on the most important line. d p of previous and num equals d p of num and previous plus 1. This looks a bit like magic, so let's unpack it. Imagine we just processed a number that gave us a sequence ending in the remainder pair, num, previous. Now, we're adding our new number, which has a remainder of num. The new sequence's last two remainders will be previous num, so we're saying the length of this new sequence is just one more than the old one. This clever swap of indices previous to previous how we pass the state forward and continue the alternating pattern. It's really smart. So how fast is this solution? For time complexity, we have a main loop that runs n times, where n is the number of elements in our input list. Inside that we have a second loop that runs k times. This gives us a total time complexity of big O of n times k time luge. For space, our dp table is the main consumer of memory. Since it's a k by k grid, the space complexity is big O of k squared. Given the problem constraints, this is a very solid and efficient solution. So, let's recap the main points. The most important step was to analyze the problem's condition and simplify it. This revealed a simple underlying rule about remainders. That rule told us that any valid subsequence must follow an alternating pattern. Once we knew the pattern, dynamic programming became a natural tool to build the solution. 
And we saw how a clever state transition in the DP code can solve the problem very elegantly. And that's a wrap for this problem. I hope breaking it down this way was helpful. If you found value in this explanation, please give it a like, and consider subscribing for more Leak Code walkthroughs. If you have any questions or a different way to solve it, drop a comment below. Thanks for watching, and keep on coding.